Good day and welcome to JNN's Weekday News. I'm Unique Francis. Here now are our stories. All is not well in the country's penal system as correctional officers have become more restive. Trade unions representing the 2,400 officers say with immediate effect they cannot guarantee normality at adult and juvenile correctional facilities. This follows a meeting yesterday at the Finance Ministry. According to the unions, they did not get an improved offer from the ministry regarding the alignment of their members' salaries. And it's being reported that there is also unrest among some groups of employees at the National Water Commission, NWC, in the wake of an operational review of divisions at the entity. The National Workers Union, NWU, says it has been informed that the K-Factor unit is being scaled down and employees will be reassigned to other areas at the commission. It claims that due process has not been followed. NWU Vice President Granville Valentine last night warned that the changes are not going down well with the workers. It has been announced that a major consortium of American, European and Middle Eastern investors has expressed strong interest in the Logistics Hub initiative. Industry Minister Anthony Hilton says representatives of the group are in Jamaica meeting with government officials. A formal proposal will be submitted to the government. Mr. Hilton said the consortium is mobilizing four billion U.S. dollars to design, build, as well as operate integrated components of the logistics hub. The minister said if this materializes, it will accelerate the logistics hub initiative. Children's advocate Diane Gordon Harris has made recommendations for schools to adopt in dealing with students during certain types of events. The proposals come in reaction to the drowning of two students of the Green Pond Primary School in St. James. Some parents accused the institution of not doing enough to protect the boys who were washed away in a gully after leaving school. Mrs. Harrison is proposing a system that would come in place during inclement weather, approaching hurricanes or other emergencies. Meanwhile, Vice President of the National Parents Teachers Association, Lorna Lawson, has outlined a drive now on the way to assist in getting information to parents because of the difficulties now being experienced. It's a text message system to be implemented island-wide. As of September this year, the Ministry of Education will pay $11,500 per annum in tuition support for each child in a state-run place of safety. This is in addition to the payment of examination fees. Education Minister Ronald Thwaites made the announcement yesterday. He said the ministry has been providing textbooks and resource materials to institutions operated by the Department of Corrections. The ministry also provides teachers for some of the institutions. Mr. Thwaites added that the ministry is proposing to include incarcerated youth in the rollout of the Tablet in Schools initiative. And for our international story, a 25-year-old woman who disappeared 10 years ago in California has told police she was forced to marry her captor and have his child. Officers said the unnamed woman in Santa Ana contacted police after finding her sister on Facebook. 41-year-old Isridro Garcia was arrested on Tuesday on suspicion of kidnapping, rape and false imprisonment. In a statement, police said he had been living with the girl's family at the time of her disappearance. The abuse began in 2004 when Mr. Garcia was dating the victim's mother and resided with her and her daughters in Santa Ana, a city in Orange County. And those were our stories for this newscast. Do remember to check out our live streaming at jamaicanewsnetwork.com. I'm Unique Francis and this is JNN Newsworth Watching.